Hello there, it is time for another basic science lesson and today we'll be looking at the topic atomic structure. Now the objective of today's lesson is to ensure that learners are able to define atom, state Dalton's atomic theory, describe the structure of a typical atom and finally describe the characteristics of the components of an atom. Now we'll be looking at the topic what is an atom. Now an atom is the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction. Atom is also defined as the basic building block of matter. Atoms generally don't exist independently. Instead they form ions and molecules which further combine in large number to form matter that we see, feel and touch. Now these are the basic facts about atom. Now the word atom means undivided. Atoms are the smallest particles that make up the element. An atom's identity depends on its number of protons. The three parts of an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons. But the space between the electrons and the nucleus is vast, so atoms are 99.9% .9 empty space. These are the basic facts about atoms. Now moving on, we'll be looking at Dalton's atomic theory. Now, Dalton's atomic theory was a scientific theory on the nature of matter put forward by the English physicist and chemist John Dalton in the year 1808. Now, Dalton's atomic theory states that all matter is made of atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. The atoms of a given element are different from those of any other element. Compounds are combinations of two or more different types of atoms and finally a chemical reaction is a rearrangement of atoms. Now moving on, we'll be looking at the simple atomic model. As you can see in the picture here, you can see the simple atomic model. Now the atomic structure refers to the structure of an atom comprising a, a nucleus which is at the center. As you can see right here, we have the nucleus at the center here. In which you have the protons which, which are positively charged so you can see that the green balls here are positively charged these are the protons and neutrons which are neutral in other words they carry no charge that the negatively charged particles called electrons revolve around the center of the nucleus so you can see right here the electron which is negatively charged it revolves around the nucleus itself so this is the description of the simple atomic model now let's look at a typical structure of a of a hydrogen and carbon atoms now this is the pictorial representation of hydrogen atom and carbon atom right here now the hydrogen atom has only one proton in the nucleus of its atom and one electron in the shell surrounding the nucleus and that's what we see right here in the nucleus contains only one proton and outside the nucleus we have one electron now in the case of carbon atom with atomic number of six and mass number of twelve has six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus that's what we see here we have six protons and six neutrons within its nucleus and six electrons around its shell as you can see one two three four five six so within the nucleus you have six protons and six neutrons which combining together forms the mass number while the atomic number talks about only the number of proton so now as you can see here carbon atom can be written in this in this format so you have the carbon atom which is a capital letter which represents the element we have um, 12 here which represents the mass number and six here below which represents the atomic number so the atomic number which is six is the number of protons or electrons electrons in the sense that if we have a neutral atom while the mass number is the number of neutron and proton contained in the nucleus now moving along we'll be looking at the subatomic particles and properties now in the previous slide you saw the subatomic particles found in a, a simple atomic model we have the proton the neutron and the electron now our current model of the atom can be broken down into three constituent parts the proton neutron and electrons 
Each of these parts has an associated charge, with protons carrying a positive charge, electrons having a negative charge, and neutrons possessing no net charge. Now we're going to be looking at the properties of these subatomic particles. Now let's start with electron. This is the subatomic particle electron. This is the symbol that is for electron carrying a negative charge. Its location is an electron cloud. It moves round the nucleus. It carries a negative charge. And its relative mass, AMU here is atomic mass unit, is 1 in 1840, approximately what? Zero. So it is almost negligible in mass. That's relative atomic mass units. In other words, relative to proton and neutron. So if we divide the proton into 1840 parts, one of it will be compared to the mass of electron. But the actual mass is right here in grams. You can see the mass is really very small, almost negligible. In the case of proton, this is the symbol right here. It carries a positively charged. It is located in the new in the nucleus. It has a positive charge. It has a relative atomic mass unit or relative mass, which is atomic mass unit right here of one. And this is actual mass. In the case of the neutron, the neutron, this is the symbol right here. It is found in the nucleus. It carries no charge. In other words, it is neutral. And relative, uh, relative mass is one. This is the actual mass right here, the same as the proton. Now we've come to the end of our lesson for today. Let's take a quick look at the summary. An atom is the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction. Dalton's atomic theory was a scientific theory on the nature of matter put forward by the English physicist and chemist John Dalton in the year 1808. The atomic structure refers to the structure of an atom comprising a nucleus which is at the center in which the proton and neutrons are present. The negatively charged particles called electrons revolve around the center of the nucleus. Now before we go, I want you to pause this video and answer the questions in this assessment to see how much of the lessons that you have understood or imbibed and I will see you again in the next lesson.